This drawing is going to help us with the anatomy of the cerebrum. This is more of the surface anatomy. The surface anatomy will then help us identify some of those functional regions, again, divided into the sensory areas, the motor areas, and the association areas. As you can see, based on these colors, there are five lobes of the brain. You have the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, shown here in blue, the occipital lobe, which is in the back, posterior, temporal lobe, and then there's actually an internal lobe called the insula lobe. So they're showing this as being an internal. They're kind of projecting it out. So you know that there's another lobe, but it's more on the inside of the brain. We also see the cerebellum here. Note the folia. Those are these folds in the cerebellum. There are some other important landmarks to make note of. One is a groove known as the central sulcus. The central sulcus is the division between the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe. It also is a major division in that the fold in front of it, known as the precentral gyrus, contains a primary motor area. So this, this fold here controls most of your skeletal uh, stimulation. Behind the central sulcus, in what's known as the post-central gyrus, is an area called the primary somatosensory. It gets a lot of your body senses, touch, pain, temperature, vibrations, go to that area. And we'll revisit those two areas in a moment. But it's important to note that central sulcus and then the pre and post-central gyrus. There's also a groove that separates the temporal lobe. It's known as the lateral cerebral sulcus. There's also a deep fissure that separates out the cerebellum. That's known as the transverse fissure. There's yet another fissure you can't see, but the fissure that separates the two hemispheres is known as the longitudinal fissure. And that runs right down the midline of the brain in order to separate the two cerebral hemispheres. So this gives you a little bit of the surface anatomy, but more importantly than knowing the surface anatomy is to be able to identify functional areas. So this is another drawing of a brain. It's positioned kind of in the opposite direction in that this is the anterior and this is the posterior. These different colors are representing functional areas of the cerebrum. And each of these functional areas have a specific name, and then we need to think about what those areas are going to do. So on this slide, we're going to focus more on the sensory areas. These areas are receiving, helping to interpret, but more importantly, just to perceive uh, these senses. First one is this blue area, known as the primary somatosensory. There's two bullet points. The first bullet point is going to tell us the anatomical region, the post-central gyrus. The second bullet point tells us a little bit about what that area is going to do. It's going to get impulses from touch, proprioception, pain, and temperature. So when you touch something, that information goes here so you can perceive it. Your body positioning goes there. Pain is going to go there. So how you know that you've cut yourself is this area of the brain is perceiving that. It's understanding that there is something painful and it helps to localize that pain. So you know exactly where that pain is coming from. And then temperature. So somato or soma means body. So you think of somatosensory as kind of the, your body senses, mostly you know cutaneous from your skin, but also from joints um, to be able to determine your body position. So that's a major sensory area. There's another one 
if you keep moving laterally down this, this post-central gyrus, there's an area just above the lateral cerebral sulcus known as your primary gustatory area. And gustation is your sense of taste. So nerve impulses coming from your taste buds eventually arrive there. Now first they have to go to the thalamus, and the thalamus is going to relay it to that area of the cerebrum. There's a primary auditory area that's found in the temporal lobe, shown here in this darker green area. Uh, the surrounding area is more of an association area. It helps to interpret what you hear. There's a primary olfactory area, which is found in the temporal lobe, but it's, all, it's, in, it's in pretty deep, so they don't show it on this picture. There's the primary visual area, which is in your occipital lobe. So trauma to the back of the brain can often impair someone's ability to see. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a damage to an eye or an optic nerve. It could be a brain injury that causes loss of vision. This next slide, we're going to look at motor areas. One of the most important motor areas is known as your primary motor area, shown here in red. That area, the anatomical name is the precentral gyrus. The functional name is the primary motor area. And it controls most of your skeletal movements. So when you move your arm, your leg, when you're walking, when you're picking up a pencil, those nerve impulses are coming from the primary motor area. But remember, your cerebellum is also involved. It's going to help with more of the precision of those muscles. There's a special area dedicated to speech. It's known as Broca's speech area. It's also in the frontal lobe. So notice you've got a lot of motor control in your frontal lobe. It's going to control muscles involved in speech. That's an interesting thing to think about. One, in that speech is a, a sp more specific area of the brain. Uh, it's also usually the left hemisphere. Most of your language skills, speech, uh, interpreting when someone's talking to you, that's done with the left side of the brain. So this area is usually on the left, in the left hemisphere, frontal lobe, uh, kind of below that primary motor area. So if there's an injury there, or there's a tumor, uh, an individual might have trouble uh, speaking. They can interpret maybe what you're telling them, but they will have a hard time speaking themselves. These two drawings are pretty funny, because uh, you got this little guy here. And th th these are known as the homunculus. Uh, homunculus means little man. But what we've done is we've mapped areas of the primary motor area and areas within the primary somatosensory area. And we know exactly what area of those um, functional regions are either controlling different parts of the body. So we know when we move our thumb, that comes from this area here. We know that when we move our elbow, it comes from this area here. We know our shoulder is controlled by an area here. We know our ankle, when we move our ankle, it comes from here. When we wiggle our toes, that control comes from here. So a homunculus means little man, in that we've used kind of a drawing of this, this little man to map out exactly where we localize our muscle control. Same thing here in, with the somatosensory area. So these are where your senses are going. So for example, when you touch your nose, that goes to this specific area of the somatosensory cortex. Uh, when you bump your elbow, that goes right here to this area for interpretation. So we know how we localize. If we cut our thumb, 
we it goes here for localization. So these are called the homunculus. There's one for the motor, primary motor, and one for the somatosensory. Finally, we have more complicated areas known as association areas. These perform those complex integrative functions. Uh, they use memory, they use emotions, reasoning, judgment, uh, personality, and intelligence to help interpret sensory information and make decisions about it. An example is if you if you touch something just the ability to perceive that touch is your primary somatosensory. But to be able to figure out what it is based on memory, based on intelligence, that is using an association area. And that's done actually back here called the somatosensory association area. Another example is when you look at something and see something. The ability to perceive that is primary visual, right here in the darker green. But to be able to interpret what you're seeing is using an association area, visual association area. The example I always like to give is a doorknob. When you look at a doorknob in the morning, just being able to see that doorknob is primary visual. But to be able to remember how to use a doorknob uh, using your intelligence and your memory uh, has more to do with the visual association area. So you have somatosensory association that helps you interpret what you touch, what you feel. You have visual association helps you interpret what you see Wernicke's is an interesting area. Wernicke's helps with language, not speaking. That's Broca's. Remember, that's a motor area, Broca's speech area. Wernicke's is more posteriorly located, and it helps you interpret language. So when someone is speaking to you, it helps translate words into thoughts and it helps you learn new words. So you use Wernicke's quite a bit in A&P when you're learning all these new uh, words. So notice that Wernicke's is an association area. It helps with interpretation of language. Where Broca's is a motor area, it helps you speak. This is a picture showing how information travels within the brain. So this is all white matter. And white matter in the brain is uh, defined as tracks. You've got tracks that go within the brain, out of the brain, uh, between the two hemispheres in the brain. Um, and you can see that all these little white matter tracks are going to specific destinations within the brain. There's one very important track. It's an example of a commissural track. Kamashuro means it goes from right to left or left to right. This one is known as the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is a white matter track that connects the right and left cerebral hemispheres. So this is how information goes from the right side to the left side or the left side to the right side in the brain. It's a very distinct structure in the brain when you do a mid-sagittal uh, section through the brain. Next video we're going to kind of review a lot of, of these regions using this drawing.